So a CVL is, that's a credit, a, a credit as voluntary liquidation, is a director's driven process. The board resolve the company cannot continue to trade by reason of its liabilities and a meeting of creditors is called. And from the date of the director's meeting to the date of the creditors meeting, which is the date when the company enters liquidation and the liquidator is appointed, is around 16 to 28 days, depending upon the articles of the company. The court and the official receiver are not involved in this process at all. And a compulsory liquidation is a court-driven process which can be initiated or petitioned by a number of parties. That is, a creditor, as it has been in this particular case, or a member, that's a shareholder, or an administrator or a supervisor of a company voluntary arrangement, a CVA. And typically, the time scale for a compulsory liquidation is much longer than it would be for a creditor's voluntary liquidation. And assuming a creditor issues a winding up petition against a company, it's likely to be around six to seven weeks before it's listed to be heard by the court. And at the hearing, <laughs> the court will issue a winding up petition, a winding up order, unless there are good grounds not to make the order. And once the order has been made, the process is taken over by the official receiver, and if there appears to be assets belonging to the company, the official receiver will look to have an independent insolvency practitioner appointed to deal with the case. And he can do this either through what's called the rota, which is a, a list of local IPs that are prepared to, to take these appointments, or he can make, it, uh, make an appointment following direct consultation with the major creditors, which of course is what he did in this instance, or we could be appointed by a formal creditors meeting. But that would take at least another three to four weeks to convene. 